What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number six. And we start today's episode off with a massive game at the bottom of the table. As you can see, approaching the halfway point in the season. 15 games in. We're currently three points above the drop zone on the back of our massive win at Ella Road against Leeds in the last game in the last episode. We're now taking on the Hornets. Just like us, newly promoted to the Premier League. But at the moment, rock bottom and the only side winless in the division with just six points. So heading into this game, huge, huge opportunity to record back-to-back -back victories and try and pull away from the drop zone. But heading into the game, obviously, as we know, one of the problems we've had this season and a the common theme of this season so far has been the lack of goals. As we know, that game against Leeds United so far is the only game, I believe, we scored more than one goal in a single game, which says the story, it tells the story in its own, really, doesn't it? So heading into this game, I knew this was the chance. This was the chance to get a few goals on the board and a big win as well. But this is the problem I've had in FIFA 22 this year. I'm creating multiple chances, but I just can't seem to take them. Chance after chance after chance with Spurn. This was the latest one, 19 minutes after the restart by Ivan Tony. And in a game where we completely dominated, Watford hadn't put us under any pressure whatsoever. I was thinking, surely, surely one of these shots is going to find a back of the net and we're going to break the deadlock. Brian and Buemo, the latest to have his shot saved as we were still tied at 0-0 and deadlocked. And just a couple minutes after that, as the Hornets came on a very slow counter-attack, Hernandez goes down the right-hand side. Ethan Pinnock comes across but can't stop him stepping back into the left. Eventually, he splits two defenders, finds Isoko. Two fan rolls it back to Isoko and as Dennis goes for goal, Raya is beaten. And I was absolutely fuming because I've seen this story before. Dominate for most of the game in terms of the shots and have a higher XG, but lose the game by a single goal. I was thinking, I can't believe it's going to happen again. Watford, winless, all season long. They need a win if they're going to survive. No team has ever survived with zero wins. They've got to start picking up at some point. But in this game, trailing, trailing my goal, I was thinking, this is going to be the worst result of the season so far. But deep into stoppage time, with virtually the final kick of the game, we go on the break, and wouldn't you just know it? Finally! And like the ninth attempt, we get the ball to find the back of the net. Ricky J. Jones, who came off the bench directly after the Hornets got their goal. I thought, you know what? Might as well get a kid a go, right? We've got 10 minutes to go. We're trailing by a goal. Might as well throw the kid on, see what he can do. We know he's got the electrifying pace. That's his second goal of the season. First in the Premier League. And the youngster, the teenager, rescues a point with virtually the final kick of the game. Brentford won. Watford won, but still, as you saw by the fan reaction, a very disappointing result. We had 10 shots in the game. Our XG was 3.6. Watford had one shot, but we both scored a goal each. So frustrating, man. I can imagine Ben Foster on the bench with his little GoPro laughing at us in the match day vlog there. The Cycling GK, come on the boys. Still love that channel, but even so, that was such a frustrating game. And, you know, I have to say as well, uh, obviously this is Saturday morning for you guys. It will be a quadruple upload weekend. Back in the day, I used to ask for a like target on a Saturday morning. So if you can get this video to 1,000 likes, I'll put four videos up this weekend, but it'll be a guaranteed quadruple upload weekend because I'm really enjoying FIFA 22. You know, I do want to point that out. I know to start this season off, I know to start this series off, I've been talking about how frustrating the gameplay can be at times. I do think there are certain things that need tweaking. Don't get me wrong, there's no doubt about that. But it is still a fun game to play. And the reason why I'm really enjoying it is because of the challenge. Yes, there are games like that that are absolutely infuriating. And I'm not the one to rage playing video games. Games. That's just not me, man. You guys know I'm very laid back. But those sort of games do bring out a little bit of anger uh, from me. But even so, the, the game is still fun to play. And I think the main reason why is because I'm really enjoying the challenge of this season so far. That should have been a banker. Any other FIFA career mode, that's a banker. But now in this one, the games are just so uncertain. You just don't know what's going to happen. And as we promote one of our youth players to our first team here, uh, James Arnold, uh, the right wing back, who of course we're training to play uh, in that right wing back role after the uh, transition from Charlie Bore in our academy from what we were going to have him as a right wing back to a left wing back. You know, I, again, I, I am really enjoying the challenge of this save, and that's the most fun thing at the moment because, you know, we're approaching halfway point, three games to go to, we're officially halfway through the season at the moment. I mean, we're only a couple of points above the drop zone. And again, rock bottom Hornets taking us on at home. Winless so far this season. Should have been a banker, but no, this FIFA is a lot, lot harder. And that's one thing I'm really, really appreciating from EA. At times, last year, Ultimate was, again, I wouldn't say too easy, but too easy to exploit, if you know what I mean. 
nowadays, no, not in this FIFA. Like, pace has been, I wouldn't say neutralized, but it's nowhere near as effective. Finishing the chances you get is a lot more difficult. In FIFA 21, basically 9 out of 10 one on ones you had would find the back of the net. This year, it's more like a conversion ratio of like 33 to 50%. So it's a lot more difficult to get the goals. Um, I, I do think, again, it probably should be a little bit easier to score goals because I think at the moment a lot of the games are low scoring. And again, we're, we've got the worst scoring record in the division. That kind of does need to change. But um, yeah, for the most part, the challenge of this save is what I'm really enjoying the most. But uh, still, with the following game, Man. United dress rehearsal for the EFL Cup quarter final here at the Community Stadium. This was a game where I couldn't complain. I got absolutely dominated from start to finish. Cristiano Ronaldo returning to Manchester United this season. Such a fantastic timeline. Uh, coming back to Old Trafford, he's already had a couple of big moments since returning. Of course, that game winner against Villarreal in the week. That was it's so dramatic, that. But, um... Yeah, he scored both goals to gain in a 2-0 loss. And following that, we also saw three players on the deals come the end of the year that could leave on free transfers. Um, and three of our centre-backs as well, Zanka, uh, Pontus Janssen, and also Ethan Pinnock as well. Now, Zanka, the Danish centre-half, he is in his 30s now. I'm probably just going to let him go on a free transfer. He came in for this season on a one-year deal, but we have used him quite a bit. He's our fourth-choice centre-half, but I think I'm going to let him go and look for a younger centre-half to replace him. But of course, Pontus Janssen would get a contract extension. He's the captain. I can't have the captain and feeling uncertain about his contract or in a relegation fight this season. But as for Ethan Pinnock, big fan of Ethan Pinnock. Such a great success story from Dulwich Hamlet to the Premier League. Well, one of those feel-good stories, you know. So I gave those two guys new contracts and they're staying for at least a couple more years. Still following the loss to Manchester United, returning away from home now, going to St Mary's to take on Ralph Hasnett or Southampton on the South Coast. And what a huge game this was. On the back of the loss, the Saints right now in 18th place and we're only one point above of them in the table. Come the end of 90 minutes, we could be back in the bottom three for the first time in several weeks. So heading into this game, I needed a response. And early on, we took the lead through Wissa, banging it in and giving us the early goal. And in 22 minutes into the game, I couldn't believe it. I talked about it in a Watford game. Oh, it's so hard to score goals in this FIFA. It's really, really difficult. But then heading into this game, I don't know what happened, man. I don't know whether I was feeling aggressive or just knowing what was at stake heading into the game. But I was like, no, not this time. Not this time. And 41 minutes into the game, after he scored our second, he bagged our third. And right before the break, as Tony bags his brace, the scoreline at halftime would read, Southampton nil, Brentford free. I don't know what was going on in this game. You best believe the boys are walking down the tunnel into the dressing room. I was looking at every single one of them saying, get the F in, boys. Get the F in. We're freeing it up against the Saints in a relegation six-pointer at half-time. I don't know what's going on, but I'm loving it. But six minutes after he starts, we're okay. All right, let's just calm ourselves down a little bit. The Saints get back in the game. 3-1, bang one in near post. And they're back in the match. And in 20 minutes to go, Romero who scored their first. Almost got the second. A little bit of a scrum hill. David Araya butter things as Shane Long's going to capitalise. But we managed to get it clear. And from that, we go on the break. The silver to Henry and Buemo. Back to Rico Henry who outpaces Jack Stevens down left hand side. He's got Tony the back stick and whistles there as well. Rolls it for a Tony. Bangs it, top corner. The breaking bees on the counter attack. Absolutely lightning go from one end of the pitch to the other in ridiculous time. And Ivan, the shocker, Tony picks up the match ball. Final score Southampton 1, Brentford 4. I don't know what to say other than get the F in. Such a difficult start to the season, primarily in terms of scoring goals when it mattered the most. When it matters most, there's always one player you can rely on. There's always one guy you know didn't get the job done for you. Mr. Ivan Tony Bags the hat-trick, set up the goal for Wissa early on as well. A superstar performance from a Docks legend in a 4-1 victory in a relegation six-pointer. You know, in our FIBA 20 career mode, he was known for scoring the goals on the big stage. Europa League finals, cup finals, big Premier League battles for the title, Champions League games... This is a relegation six-pointer, but Ivan Tony is still dependable as ever, regardless of the situation. 
I'm going to repeat that scoreline. Southampton 1, Brentford 4. I was going ballistic in that game, man. For all the troubles we've had scoring goals, that game made up for the entire season. That was so great, man. Massive game. And what a win away against Ralph Hassan at all side. Anyway, final game of today's episode. And oh my goodness gracious me. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's the EFL Cup quarterfinal, it's Manchester United, it's at Old Trafford and we're massive underdogs. I've got a few starters out there, but again, for the most part, a quite rotated team with a huge game to come on Boxing Day away against Brighton. But right before the break, this dude, unbelievable. He might not ever return to the goal scoring form he had in FIFA 20. Do you think he's going to get 40 goals from me again? I hardly doubt it. But what a diving header to give us a shock lead at Old Trafford and stun the stadium silent. Manchester United 0, Brentford 1. And I was thinking, goodness, is this it? Like that win against Southampton, is this the turning point for the season? And things finally start to go our way? Well, who knows? But right before the break, finally get some luck here. Edison Cavani's header headed off the line and onto the crossbar as we still led by a goal at half-time at Old Trafford. And I couldn't believe it, man. Still up and still leading despite the heavy pressure from the Red Devils. But just before the hour mark, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer makes a change. Cavani, who strode in the first half, comes off. On comes the guy that bagged a brace against us in the league game a few weeks ago and wouldn't you just know it with basically his first touch that's coming on he bags the goal to level things for the Red Devils Cristiano Ronaldo makes it 1-1 as the Portuguese legend puts the Red Devils back on level terms and I was thinking okay like, as soon as I saw him come on the pitch I was like okay the intensity is going to be up and it's going to be a lot more difficult to keep them at bay but they had been the better team for the vast majority of the game and with 12 minutes to go trying to take the game to a penalty shootout Bruno Fernandes off lows to his Portuguese compatriot and he's there once again no surprise he runs to Oli to celebrate he's the man that brought him off the bench and in half an hour he flipped the script from a goal up to 2-1 down courtesy of Sue Cristiano Ronaldo. He is the GOAT, perhaps. It depends on how you look at it. He or Lionel Messi, that's what most people think. But I tell you what, in the past two games here, he certainly made a strong case for him to be considered the greatest of all time. Bags the brace, coming off the bench, and there it is. Our progress in the EFL Cup ends at the hands of Manchester United, as we expected, to be fair. We are out in the last day. We did so well to reach this stage, to be fair, getting through three rounds with weakened teams. But unfortunately, we go no further. We won't make the final four. We're out in the EFL Cup quarterfinals, but it's been a really good run, to be fair. Very fun and a nice distraction after some poor form in the Premier League. But that well, in this episode of Korea Mode, guys, big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you have done, please drop a like. Once again, there's no like target. There is a guaranteed quadruple upload weekend because I'm just having too much fun with the save, man. I just want to keep on playing it. But have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you in the next episode of Korea Mode very soon.